Engineers and scientists worldwide use MATLAB to solve complicated real-world problems, analyze data, and visualize ideas that lead to a better understanding of complex systems. So what's special about MATLAB? MATLAB combines a desktop environment tuned for iterative analysis with a programming language whose syntax mirrors common science and engineering notation. MATLAB also provides the ability to quickly create and customize various types of visualizations. Hello, and welcome to Image Processing OnRamp. Images are everywhere. In industries from healthcare to transportation, agriculture to retail, space exploration to archaeology, image data are used for monitoring, identification, and discovery. And where there are images, there is image processing. At a high level, image processing is a set of techniques which act on a digital image to modify it or extract information from it. Image processing techniques can be used to adjust contrast, remove noise, or find edges. And by combining multiple techniques, you can design algorithms which perform increasingly complex tasks. In this course, you'll use MATLAB and Image Processing Toolbox to implement a complete image processing workflow. By the end, you'll have built an algorithm which can identify and collect images of receipts from a busy camera roll. You don't need to learn a lot of theory to start doing image processing, but it will help if you know a little bit of MATLAB, just the basics. If you've never used MATLAB before, it's easy to get started, and we recommend you first take MATLAB OnRamp to get you up to speed quickly. This course should take about two hours to complete, but you can leave any time and come back later. Throughout the course, you'll be interacting with a web-based version of MATLAB inside our training environment. It has a slightly different look and feel from MATLAB Online or the desktop version of MATLAB, but don't worry, you're using the exact same MATLAB language. Enjoy the course. The values. Color images are also stored using intensities, but now each pixel has three intensity values, red, green, and blue, or RGB values. Each color's intensity values are represented by a 2D matrix called a color plane. So even though the picture is two-dimensional, it's stored as a three-dimensional array. When you view a color plane, it's displayed in grayscale. That's because it's a 2D matrix of intensities, just like a grayscale image. But since you know that this is the red color plane, you know that the bright pixels have a lot of red, and the dark ones don't. The blue color plane is pretty dark, which tells us this image doesn't have much blue in it. This bright patch here? Well, it's also bright in the green color plane. The result is a pale blue-green in the color image. Different combinations of RGB values create the different colors you see in a color image. So far, we've used MATLAB to read and display images, inspect their properties, plot their intensity histograms, and adjust their contrast, all using MATLAB commands. Prefer a point-and-click approach? Well, try the Image Viewer app. You can use the app to display the image, view information, and display the histogram to interactively adjust the contrast. Open the Image Viewer app using the command imtool, or by searching for it in the Apps tab. Let's start by loading and viewing an image. You can click the Info icon to display information about the image, like the size or data type. The Pixel Region tool allows you to inspect the RGB values of the image. For example, these road pixels contain a bit more blue than red or green. You can move the region selector to inspect another area, like these taillights, which have higher red values, as we'd expect. Image Viewer app only allows contrast to be adjusted on a grayscale image, so let's load one from the workspace. Selecting Adjust Contrast will open another window displaying the histogram and controls for adjusting the contrast. Adjust the left slider to augment dark pixels, and adjust the right slider to brighten lighter pixels. When you're done, you can export the image to the workspace, or save it to a file. Image segmentation is the task of dividing, or segmenting, an image into regions, like lanes, cars, and road. 
There are different ways of doing this depending on your image. For example, you might use edge detection to find the boundary of an object. Or you could segment by texture. Or by looking for specific shapes and sizes. Segmenting by color is probably the one you're most familiar with, even if you didn't know it. Green screens are everywhere, from Hollywood to your local weather forecast. But whatever segmentation method you apply to your image, your goal is to identify regions of interest. For example, in a green screen image, that means differentiating between the foreground, which you want to keep, and the green background. That's where a mask comes in. Okay, not exactly that kind of mask, but sort of. A binary mask is a logical array that indicates a region of interest. The length and width of the mask are the same as the original image. A value of 1 indicates a pixel you want to keep, and a 0 indicates one you don't. You can use the mask to work with portions of your image, which lets you do things like replace the background. Or you can use a mask to identify objects, or even do calculations. Sometimes, no matter which threshold we pick, we can't quite seem to get a good binary image. See these pesky specs? Well, they're the result of having a noisy image. We can see many places in the original image where an individual pixel has a noticeably different intensity value than the pixels surrounding it. You can smooth out these differences by using a technique called spatial filtering. Spatial filtering is a neighborhood operation where each pixel's value is changed based on neighboring pixel values. How the pixel's value changes depends on the filter. So what is a filter? Well, a filter is a matrix and it acts like a mask. When you place the filter over part of an image, it creates a window or a neighborhood around a pixel. To apply a filter, you perform some operation on that window. For example, a linear filter performs a weighted average. So you multiply the values in the filter and the image and add the result. This gives you a single value that you can think of as the new filtered value for that pixel. Then move the filter over to the next pixel and repeat. Applying the filter to every pixel gives you a new filtered image. Operations like this are sometimes called sliding window operations. Different filters have different purposes, determined by the values in the filter matrix. For example, this filter replaces each pixel with the average of itself and the eight pixels around it. It's good for blurring edges and removing noise. Well, that sounds useful. In this next activity, you'll learn how to create and apply this filter in MATLAB. Morphological operations are a type of sliding window operation, meaning that, like filtering, they use a sliding window to look at the neighborhood around a pixel, then perform some operation on it to compute a new image. With linear filtering, to change the output image, you change the values in the filter. With morphological operations, you change the output by changing the size and shape of the window. The window is called the structuring element. Now, the shape is important because there are primarily two operations that can be performed on the elements in the window, max and min, or in morphology speak, dilation and erosion. Dilation takes the brightest pixel in the window, and erosion takes the darkest. These operations don't leave much room for customization, so to change the result, you need to change the window. But it's more common for dilation and erosion to be performed in sequence rather than by themselves. Let's use this image of a butterfly to look at how combining these operations works in practice. Erosion followed by dilation is called opening an image. Opening emphasizes and connects the darker parts of the image. It also removes brighter areas, like these spots and stripes, that are smaller or narrower than the structuring element, but leaves ones that are larger or wider. When we reverse the order and perform dilation followed by erosion, it's called closing an image, and it has the opposite effect from opening. Closing emphasizes and connects the brighter parts of the image, and it removes small or narrow, darker areas. The antennae have disappeared completely. Now, for both opening and closing, we've been using a small disk as a structuring element. And if you look closely, you can see a shadow of the disk shape in the processed images. 
if we change the structuring element to a square, the shadows look like squares instead of circles. And if we make the square just a little bit smaller, some of the details in the wings return, and that square shadow is a little smaller too. So far, you've been importing each image into memory individually and then processing and classifying it. That's great for one or two images, but in practice, you've taken tens, hundreds, or even thousands of pictures. In that case, a better approach is to use a data store. A data store is a MATLAB variable that acts as a reference to a data source, such as a folder of image files. When you create an image data store, MATLAB looks at the images and stores some basic meta information about them, such as the names and formats, but it doesn't import the image data. Instead, you can use the data store to import the images later when you need them, either individual pictures or the whole camera roll. When it's time to process your images, you can read them from a data store one at a time, and then process and classify the loaded image. Because the image variable will be overwritten each time you load a new file, you won't end up with 100 images in your MATLAB workspace. In this section, you'll create a data store and use it to read images in a loop and process and classify them. Engineers and scientists worldwide use MATLAB to solve complicated real-world problems, analyze data, and visualize ideas that lead to a better understanding of complex systems. So what's special about MATLAB? MATLAB combines a desktop environment tuned for iterative analysis with a programming language whose syntax mirrors common science and engineering notation. MATLAB also provides the ability to quickly create and customize various types of visualizations, 